So we saw two lectures ago that uh, a matching in a bipartite graph or a non-bipartite graph is maximum size if and only if we cannot find uh, an M augmenting path. So let's, and, and we also saw that doing so, finding an augmenting path in a non-maximum uh, size matching for a bipartite graph is easy. Maybe it's also easy for a uh, for a uh, general graph. So let's let's just let me write let me draw an example, and you know, we can explore whether or not that's uh, that's the case. Now, of course, this lecture and the next lecture are going to provide a polynomial time algorithm for finding augmenting paths if one exists. So I'm not not using the word easy in a precise computational or theoretic way. I just mean it's not straightforward. It doesn't reduce to a problem. Um, that we have already considered uh, in this in, in, in these lectures. But of course, as we're going to show, it, it, it is easy from a computational standpoint. Okay, so here is uh, here is a graph. All right, and now let uh, let me choose uh, a matching. So I will highlight uh, some edges, which uh, I'll highlight these three edges. And you can check that uh, this is not a maximum size matching, but it's maximal. So there's no other edge that I can add. So we're, we're stuck. And the question is, do the yellow edges constitute a maximum size matching? And so we can Maybe an idea is let's uh, try to create an alternating, an augmenting path. So how, how do we do that? Well, we, we know an augmenting path starts and ends at a node that is not covered by the graph. So there are two nodes that are not covered, uh, sorry, not covered by the matching. We know there's two nodes, this one and this one. So let us uh, start at, uh, at this node here and let's try to build uh, an alternating path and try to make an augmenting path. So I'm gonna just keep walking. Remember an, an alternating path has to go, has to take edges that are not in the matching than in the matching, etc. So I'm gonna illustrate this with dotting. So I start with a, well, it's not covered. So the first edge is always gonna be out of the matching. So I'm out of the matching, then in the matching, out of the matching, in the matching, out of the matching, in the matching and now I'm stuck. So I, I can't go anywhere. And note that I can't add any more edges. So because what would, to, to draw it a different way, you know, I would have put this in the matching, left out the yellow, put this in the matching, left out the yellow, put this in the matching, left out the yellow, and now I can't do anything. I can't, uh, I can't put um, any new edges in uh, in my matching. Right? I, I couldn't put. I can't put this in, for example, because that, that's not that's not a matching. So, so um, we see that we have to stop. But on the other hand, um, let me quickly uh, recreate this uh, this graph. We, we we could have done things differently. So we could have, what do we have here? This is my graph. My matching is these three edges. Uh, on the other hand, what could I have, uh, what could I have done? I could have started my path uh, in a different way. So I could have started my path again from here, but instead of going down, perhaps I could go uh, this way and then down here and then over here and over here and over here. Aha. So now we see that this actually was more promising. And so again, to be clear, I alternate. This goes in the matching. Yellow is swapped out of the matching, in the matching, out of the matching, in the matching. I stop and start um, I stop and start uh, with an uncovered node, and now I have found an augmenting path, 
And uh, my new matching has now four nodes, uh, four edges, the three new new edges from the path, and then the, 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 the edge, that middle yellow edge that wasn't swapped out. So this is an example that shows a non-maximum matching. As the theorem promises, there exists an augmenting path, but I'm just illustrating by this result that uh, perhaps it's not uh, straightforward uh, to find, we can't just walk until we quit. We can't, we can't take just a greedy approach um, and, and, and hope that we won't get stuck. This example, in fact, encodes the key idea. If you look at what happened, there is inside of here an odd cycle. And so what, what, what's curious is that, you know, we, we, uh, we start from this node in both examples and we want to end up at the only at, at another uncovered node. There's only one other uncovered node here. We knew we had to get there. We knew, we knew that we had to get there, but we couldn't do it when we when we started out. But so we had to go the other way. Now, what is the only reason that that could happen? It means that there is a cycle in here of odd length. And so when I went around the cycle one way, the parity of alternating didn't work out for me. But when I went around the other way, the parity of alternating uh, did work out for me. Okay, so that so we're going to see that that's exactly the, the core of this idea is encapsulated in this uh, in this little example. All right, so now let's try to extract this the wisdom that we've gotten from this from this little example and, and try to build up to a more a more general um, story. So what were we trying to do? We were trying to, a natural way towards finding uh, an augmenting path is just pick a node that's not covered. We know it has to start there. We know our, our augmenting path has got to start there. And, and then let's, uh, let's just start taking this alternating path. Start with an edge, not in the matching, then in the matching, not in the matching, in the matching. And what we're, of course, what we're hoping is that we're going to end up at a node that's also uncovered. Then we'll be able to stop. And, and, and then we found our augmenting path. So uh, we're going to define this idea of alternating trees, which is exactly what, what it sounds like. So uh, given a matching M in my graph, which is V, I'm going to give a name to the nodes that are not covered by the matching. So let's let X be those nodes. Um, be the nodes that are not or nodes or vertices not covered by M. In terms of some jargon, these are also called exposed. So you'll see you'll see that word in some of the of the literature as well. So uh, these are the set of exposed vertices. And now I want to define the uh, an M alternating tree. Again, it's going to be exactly what, what you're expecting. And so it is a tree that's rooted at some node, I'll call it R for root, that belongs to the set of exposed vertices, such that along every path from the root to a leaf, The edges alternate, not in the matching, in the matching, etc. The edges alternate, not being in M and being in M. So, really, exactly what what um, what it sounds like. Um, and uh, kind of a simple observation is that if we have an alternating tree, so if our M alternating tree contains any other exposed vertex other than R, so it contains a vertex uh, V that's in X, but you know, not equal to the, to the root node, my V's don't look too much like my R's. Uh, 
then we have a then we have an augmenting path. So this is clear. But we already saw an example where uh, we there may be an augmenting path, but you know just building out a tree. We haven't talked about an algorithm for how we're going to do that, but just building out a tree might uh, might fail to find that augmenting path. So we need to do a little bit more work, and this is what we're what we're what we're building towards. I need a few more definitions. One is maximal tree. I need to make them as as, as large as possible possible. But I also need to define odd and even vertices. And I'm going to partition the vertices into, into two. Uh, so given an M alternating tree, if sometimes I just call it an alternating tree, it's because I'm assuming that the matching is, is understood. So, but, but we can only have an alternating tree with respect to some matching um, M. So given an M alternating tree, for example, here's R, and here is my uh, here is my tree. <clears throat> um, I'm going to label the nodes according to their distance, according to the parity of their distance from the root node, as odd or even. And the root node itself is distance zero from itself, and and so I'm going to call it even. So R is as even and then these uh, two nodes are an odd distance so o for uh, for odd sometimes i might write out odd if there's danger that i'll confuse it with zero then uh, the next two are even and this would be odd and let's just continue it and these three would be even and so sim simple simple enough um so given an I'm alternating tree, as in the example, let odd be a set, uh, be the vertices in the tree that are an odd length from the root. And let even be the even distance vertices and note that uh, R is, um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that R belongs to this, uh, to this set. So now I'm going to define, uh, I guess I should define, this is a definition as well. So now I'm going to define uh, the, uh, a maximal, a maximal tree. Remember, maximal does not mean maximum size. Maximal means I can't, I, I have my, my, I can't add anything to it. Uh, so a maximal m alternating tree is one where no even vertex has uh, an edge in G to a vertex not in the tree. This is a complicated way of saying that we can't add any more vertices. Now let me just make something clear here. Let me draw in the edges of the matching. Remember that an M alternating tree is one that starts with a node R that's not in the that's not in the matching. By definition, that means that neither one of these neither one of these two uh, edges can be in the matching. But then, because it's alternating, that means that this edge is in the matching, and and so on. So all of these uh, these edges have to be in the matching. We call a tree maximal if uh, no even vertex has an edge in G because we only extend the the the, the maximal tr the, uh, a tree unless it has an augmenting path in which we stop at that 
to our matching and, and restart this entire process, um, it has to have leaves that are all uh, E's, all, all even. If I, if I terminate in a node that's labeled odd, you can notice just from this example here that if, if, I, uh, if, I, if, I stopped, um, if I stopped here, that would be an augmenting path. So we're, we're, we terminate our maximal tree either having found an augmenting path, and again, we augment the, the, the matching and then start, start the process over, or we finally stop in, uh, in an even node. And what this is saying is that a tree is maximal if we can't add anything else. And why would we not be able to add? We wouldn't be able to add because there is no other, uh, there is no other uh, edge um, from E to something that's not already in, uh, in the tree. So how, do we, how are we going to grow these uh, these alternating alternating trees um, in a straightforward way? So we choose a root node R that has to be an X and one that hasn't been chosen already, and let's uh, label that E. And then what do we do? We look at uh, we 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 automatically add all nodes adjacent to E vertices that have not been visited so far, and we call these odd. And note that uh, if any odd vertex happens to also be in X, then uh, we're done. So in other words, if this is not the empty set, then we stop. We have found an M augmenting path. We add it to, the, we add it to our matching and, and repeat. Now, uh, for each vertex in odd, well, by assumption, because we got to the step, we're not at the previous step, then this vertex that's in odd has to have, uh, has to have, um, has to be matched to something. So we have to add that edge. So just looking at the picture again, I'm, I'm sitting right here, I've added this O, well, if, if we stop here, or let me pick a different O, now we, we, we have this O here, this odd, this odd node, this edge has to exist because if it doesn't, then I found an augmenting path and, and I, I just added in it. So the cases that we're interested in are exactly the cases where uh, there's always an edge. So the procedure of growing a tree is we have, we have a set of even nodes, say these, th these, uh, these three so far. I look at all edges emanating from them to other nodes that we haven't yet added. There's nothing to add here, otherwise I would have already done it. And, and so from, from these two, I have these three nodes. I add those three nodes, I label those all odd. And again, if any one of those is an X, we're in business. Otherwise, I immediately add the three, uh, the three even nodes. And I, and I continue doing this until I can do it no longer. So for each V in odd, we add the matching edge. In other words, the edge from M and the corresponding vertex to E. Again, let me flip back to this picture. That doesn't mean that I don't have some other edge that's not in the matching. So this could very well be the picture. But these nodes, I should have drawn those in a different color probably, uh, but these nodes are not added. I do not add those nodes because from O, from any odd vertex, I only add the matched edge. So it's only, we can only have splits in the tree from even nodes, just like this illustrates. From every odd node, in other words, has to have degree uh, exactly two. 
and at some point this is going to terminate. So once this terminates, we remove all nodes and edges from G and then we repeat with the next node that is uh, that remains in uh, in the set of uncovered uncovered vertices. Okay, so the process of growing trees is straightforward. You just choose R, and then you just do as much as you can. You add every node adjacent to the root. All of those are odd. They all have to be matched. Otherwise, uh, otherwise we've already found an augmenting path. So we add each one of those. Now we have a new set of even nodes. And now we look at every single edge emanating from an even node. And, and we continue in this way, always maintaining a tree. So here is a, here is a, a key, uh, key property. And I'm going to call this, a, call this a lemma. If the above algorithm terminates and one, it did not find an augmenting path. And this is the critical property. There are no edges in G, not in the tree, but overall. I, I look at all of the edges in G. There are no edges in G between vertices that are trees labeled as even, if this is the case, then M is a maximum size matching. And I want to point out that this is not enough for us. Now, this is why I call it a, a, a sufficient condition. But you know, if we look back at uh, the example uh, that I that I gave at the very beginning, let's actually do the tree growing process. And so again, uh, these were the three edges in the matching. And of course, I'm going to I'm going to do it in the, the, the way that that I that I started, I'm going to make my tree, let me choose, I guess, a different, uh, let me choose a different color. And so my tree is, this is going to be R, I'm going to add um, these three nodes, so these are now odd, odd, odd. And then I'm going to add these three. So now these are even, even, and even. And so now we see that actually this, so that, and we stop here, right? we, we, we stop, we can't add anything, we can't add anything more. And note that uh, this violates uh, property two. Okay, so property two is violated. So this isn't telling us this, we're not out of the woods yet. This isn't yet telling us what, you know, what to do. This is a lemma about trees that do not terminate in this way. So here we have an even to even edge. Two, property two is saying that there are no edges in G that are not an even to even. Again, note that this edge is not one I added to the tree. We're not, the tree will never have even to even edges. That's not part of the construction. The tree only has even to odd edges and odd to even edges. But, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the whole graph. So let's, uh, let's, let's see if we can finish this, uh, if we can do this proof, um, and then we will, uh, Um, now let's leave this to the next, uh, let's leave this to the next lecture. So let me just recap here. So this is a sufficient condition, which tells us that if we happen to, uh, grow our, our M alternating tree 
And if we did not find an m augmenting path, that, that's kind of the obvious part. But the non-obvious part is if there are no edges in G uh, between vertices, there are no edges from even to even nodes, this is a certificate that we have found a maximum size matching. This lemma is going to be critical for us building an algorithm. And we are going to pick this up in uh, the next lecture.